dancing at the bed Moonshine and campfires dancing to the dead Hair strands and warm hands stuck in the backseat Heartbeats and ecstasy My name is Ben Andrews and I'm 41 and I grew up in Santa Barbara, California. Uh, I've always um, loved fishing and surfing basically since I was about 11 years old. I got into surfing and uh, uh, that led to fishing and then ever since I've kind of been hooked on just being around the water, mostly in the ocean. So it's been about 13 years I've been in this area and I've stayed here because it's one of the few um, year-round viable um, commercial fishing ports that we have here in California. So I started working at Miramar Surf Shop in the early 80s um, and then I started a few and failed attempts at other surf shops and then started the board shop um, and now the store has been here for 21 years. I was born in Hawaii and then we moved to the Bay Area in the 70s and so I had a boogie board, I had a wetsuit, had a beat up surfboard and my mom would drive me over and I used to go right to the jetty, Princeton Jetty, we call it the breakwater. And she'd pull up and used to be able to park on the ocean side so she would pull up and I'd jump out and um, try not to get in anybody's way, <laughs> try to catch some waves and then she'd wave me in when it was time, come on in, you know, and I was probably, uh, probably right around lower school days, so I was probably 12. Born in Denver, 1971, <clears throat> moved to El Granada, literally in a neighborhood right across the street where those houses are, in 1974. Just love having this as my home base, really felt at home with this local community. Um, got into music, and through getting into music and doing music shows, not only playing and singing in my own bands, but promoting shows as well. Um, did a lot of shows at this establishment here, and this was relatively just a bar, um, and the restaurant was always separate. And then, when they wanted to sell the business, I'd done such successful shows here, the owners of this place said, you should have it because you've, you've been the one that's really brought the most people here and promoted it on this other level. So that kind of led me into purchasing it with my dad and my brother. And we kept doing that, but then we took over the restaurant as well. And we combined it all into one big public house. And that's sort of where we're at today. My parents moved to Half Moon Bay in 1966. They, uh, would always come to the beach on the weekends. My dad had seven brothers and sisters, and my grandfather was an avid fisherman. And uh, he fished so much that we ended up moving over to the beach here in Miramar. And so I grew up right on the beach in Miramar, and every morning before school, uh, I mean, I'm sitting eating at the breakfast bar and watching the ocean. So I would drag, the, get my dad to bring this surfboard over to the beach, and I would ride these little tiny waves. I'd paddle out against the white water as far as I could, and then turn around and catch the white water and stand up on this board, and it, the white water disappear, and then it turn into just this little green water, and then just ride it and run up the beach. Growing up here, when I was three, five, four, five, six, and seven all the way to you know, 12 years old and in high school. This place was such an exciting, like, it was all about extreme sports and these hills right behind you, that used to, that's called flat track up there. That was motorcycles all day on the weekends and guys are out there surfing the coast and, and, and um, people are riding horses and you had girls in 4-H raising horses and goats and pigs and 
it was such an active sort of country, almost blue collar community. It was a really fun place. So this area is sort of a hidden little gem where San Francisco is amazing, but the, the geography, the, the landscape is obviously really urban. And down here, it's wide open. I mean, we hear the, we hear the seals at night. There's an owl that lives somewhere close by here, the owl at night. There's in those eucalyptus trees there, there's two hawks that are like our resident hawks. Um, we can see the stars at night when it's clear. The full moon wakes me up because it's so bright, you know? So it's, it's a really, in terms of a hidden gem, I think geographically, it's beautiful. Lots of open space. We have mountains right there, the oceans right there. Um, it's so far removed from the hustle and bustle of Silicon Valley or the city, San Francisco. It's a lot, really quiet. It has that small town feel. El Granada, our town is 2,000 residents. I think population of Half Moon Bay is 13,000. So the whole coast in this, this whole region is maybe 18,000 people. So it's, that's, that's to me, the pace is a lot slower. Um, it's not pretentious. It's not very competitive in terms of um, having nice things or making a ton of money. So it kind of spoke to us. It's probably one of the most beautiful places to live. Um, you know, you're centrally located. You've got Santa Cruz down, um, down south and then the Bay Area. You can always run up to the city. And then, you know, if you don't want to deal with any of that, you're just right smack dab in the middle of paradise here, really. So Appreciating what we have here and the resources, whether it be fresh artichokes that you can see in the camera behind me or the fishing we just talked about, uh, how fun the surf is, how neat Santa Cruz is, how much I enjoy San Francisco and the people in general. I think that's kind of what, what really made me want to stay here. And, and even though I love to travel and I like to travel all over the world, and I was doing a lot of that back when I got out of college, I think that the flavor and the friendships and this community is kind of what made me really want to like, not only just live here and be here, but also get involved in the community. I do work with the local fishermen because I sell, I'm the only restaurant on the coast that sells local fish. No one else has any idea where their fish is coming from, even though they say they're getting local fish, they're not. And that's a really frustrating thing for me. So what I do in my connection with the boat captains is aside from growing up with them, I walk down to the dock and I get the catch of the day and I cut it like right there. He's cutting the trolley sole caught on the Mr. Morgan today. And I'm the only place that does that, probably in the Bay Area. Everyone else just lies about it, and I think it's disgusting. So yeah, surfing in the 80s, uh, everyone kind of knew each other or knew the faces, and it was a much smaller group of people, but who surfed a lot. You'd see a lot of familiar faces, you know, 25 miles north or 25 miles south. As we're now, you know, you'll see tons more people, but you won't know anybody. And then as far as uh, like surf crowds and stuff, I, I am the event manager for the Mavericks Big Wave event. So I work with the World Surf League and I work with all the local athletes and so all the local surfers and Mavs guys bring their, their boards here and leave them here that are traveling and then all the guys that get done surfing, they come in here for a hamburger and a beer. And it's neat because you'll go from table to table of groups of men and women that have been out there surfing Mavericks talking about it and it's open to everyone. You can literally sit there and be like, are you kidding me? Like in the, in the stories, even for people that have heard it and surfed it, or it's amazing to hear. He had a bad wipeout. She got a great wave. He got the biggest wave of his life. Did you see she rescued him and the discussions in the bar? It's super fun and amazing. So that's, that's kind of something I'm really honored to host here. And it's just something that's happened naturally. So I'm super stoked on that. The, the brick and mortar stores in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s all did really, really well. Nowadays with online and everything, Somebody needs a surfboard, they've got 100 connections to go to instead of just say the 15 surf shops in the Santa Cruz, San Francisco area. Now they can go online and order something from wherever they need to. As, as we progress generation to generation, I just think there's a little a little more people so the, the coast sides are highly sought after. And so you see it on busy weekends and, and whatnot, but um, you know, the, the, the basics are all still pretty much the same, especially in the harbor. Any nice beach town nowadays, there's so much pressure on the California coastal communities, all the little ones included, like uh, all the ones up and down this coast. Um, with wealthier people moving in, it's putting uh, pressure on everyone else. Cost of living's gotten astronomically expensive being adjacent to Silicon Valley. So uh, yeah, there's, there's, been, uh, there's been huge changes in that. 
you know, say from 2010 on and you've got Tesla and Facebook and Google and Oracle and the, and the Silicon Valley empire, um, it's really those executives and those people really came to the coast and they've bought everything up to the point where there's not any inventory here. So I've actually watched this community of El Granada, it's not anything that it was. It doesn't feel like it used to. It doesn't have that flavor that I was so happy yeah. about. It's almost like everyone here is so wealthy and everyone here has a totally different outlook on everything, politics, how to handle um, things that I used to really enjoy. So it's extremely disheartening. And I'd say the majority of the people that have come here, it's not what we were all about. And it's super, it's just not the same. And I, and I say that with a little bit of disdain and, and um, like put it this way, we couldn't afford to live here and I almost was about to pack up and leave. OPL is awesome, but I'm not going to run it from Antioch. It's not the same community that it was when I was a kid growing up. There was so few people out here in the 70s, in the early 70s. I mean, we're talking, I have a driver's license in 72. So, um, you know, when we moved here, the, the population sign coming into Half Moon Bay was like 300, 300, 261. That's what it was. I see some of the benefits. I mean, we have, there's people now like Brian has a, a solid business and he has local customers, but he also has people who come in and visitors for the day. And so I, some of the benefits that I see are better amenities, some nicer restaurants, places to stay for, for people who are coming out of town. Um, so there's like a stimulation to the local economy when we have visitors. Um, there's also some of the, the local communities or local families being priced out. Um, which is a shame, and people who've lived there, here their whole lives really struggle to buy a home. Um, it is a blue-collar town kind of at heart, like a fishing town and a construction town, I think. And they're being replaced, or a lot of people from over the hill, from tech companies are moving in and um, buying nice homes. Um, but I feel like if you make the commitment to move out here and drive over the hill every day, it does take a certain person and somebody who appreciates what the coast does offer. You know, it really does, um, it seems to me that it still has some of that special character, that charm. I think that what happened was it grew so fast and so quick that they for, that we forgot about taking care of the, the right things. Beautification of a community is really important. Um, I can give you a huge example, nourishing our beaches. Our beaches are starving because this harbor has trapped all the sand for the last hundred years because this harbor was built in 1911. It's never been dredged once. They dredge every harbor in California. They don't dredge this harbor. And these new people that have come along, gotten to our politics, they don't see the importance of it. And so our beaches are starving and they're suffering. Thus comes our waves that me and Mr. Kit try and surf all the time. Like, like the surf used to be amazing, but with along comes the surf, comes beautiful beaches. Beautiful beaches um, home the snowy plovers and endangered species, protects apartments and businesses and roads and cliffs. And all those things are in danger here on the coast simply because we're not spending our money and resources and taking care of our community. And then you have people that are getting involved that are only involved for their own personal um, gain, their own personal, personal selfish greed gain. And those people have gotten into our political system and they're not from here and they really don't care about this place. They care about themselves. And so I think a way to fix all that is to get my friends that are still here and that we have our families and my family and really start to even give it a better effort to get involved and to make sure that we, beautif we, we take care of our beaches and take care of our harbor and take care of our schools. Our schools are terrible. We don't even have school buses. We can't afford them. I know there's some sort of development that's being proposed right now down at Dunes Beach, which right now is just a wide open field. And they want to bring in a, an entire sort of gated community there, which to me would be a shame. So. One thing I'd like to preserve is as much open space as possible because that's what makes this this area so special. And I'd like to see this place just be the exciting, fun, coastal place that it used to be um, instead of all the rules and regulations and, and things like that. And, and that's kind of, it's just, this place is a really special place. And, and I don't think, I think it's gonna come back around because I think enough of us are now realizing what happened and we're getting back involved, so. I mean, what a special place it is. I mean, the whole the whole peninsula, right? The Bay Area is such a great spot. So I just want to say that I do love my home and um, I'm here and I'm in the fight for, for good to, to turn it back to the, the beautiful place that I think it, 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 it was. It still is and it has so much more potential.